The Mahabharata US, UK, Sanskrit, Mahabharatam, Mahabharatam, pronounced Ma Art, M, is one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, the other being the Ramayana. The title may be translated as, The Great Tale of the Bharata Dynasty. The Mahabharata is an epic legendary narrative of the Kuruksetra War and the fates of the Kaurava and the Pandava princes. It also contains philosophical and devotional material, such as a discussion of the four goals of life, or Purasartha 12.161. Among the principal works and stories in the Mahabharata are the Bhagavad Gita, the story of Damayanti, an abbreviated version of the Ramayana, and the story of Arsya's Ringa, often considered as works in their own right. Traditionally, the authorship of the Mahabharata is attributed to Vyasa. There have been many attempts to unravel its historical growth and compositional layers. The oldest preserved parts of the text are thought to be not much older than around 400 BCE, though the origins of the epic probably fall between the 8th and 9th centuries BCE. The text probably reached its final form by the early Gupta period c. 4th century CE. According to the Mahabharata itself, the tale is extended from a shorter version of 24,000 verses called simply Bharata. The Mahabharata is the longest epic poem known and has been described as the longest poem ever written. Its longest version consists of over 100,000 sloka or over 200,000 individual verse lines, each sloka is a couplet, and long prose passages. At about 1.8 million words in total, the Mahabharata is roughly ten times the length of the Iliad and the Odyssey combined, or about four times the length of the Ramayana. W. J. Johnson has compared the importance of the Mahabharata in the context of world civilization to that of the Bible, the works of William Shakespeare, the works of Homer, Greek drama, or the Quran. Within the Indian tradition it is sometimes called the Fifth Veda. Topic. Textual history and structure The epic is traditionally ascribed to the sage Vyasa, who is also a major character in the epic. Vyasa described it as being Itahasa history. He also describes the Guru Shisha Parampara, which traces all great teachers and their students of the Vedic times. The first section of the Mahabharata states that it was Ganesha who wrote down the text to Vyasa's dictation. The epic employs the story within a story structure, otherwise known as frame tales, popular in many Indian religious and non-religious works. It is first recited at Takshashila by the sage Vaisampayana, a disciple of Vyasa, to the king Janamejaya who is the great-grandson of the Pandava prince Arjuna. The story is then recited again by a professional storyteller named Ugrasrava Sauti, many years later, to an assemblage of sages performing the twelve-year sacrifice for the king Sonika Kulapati in the Namisa forest. The text was described by some early 20th-century Western Indologists as unstructured and chaotic. Hermann Oldenburg supposed that the original poem must once have carried an immense, tragic force, but dismissed the full text as a horrible chaos. Moritz Winternitz Geschichte der Indischen Literatur 1909 considered that only unpoetical theologists and clumsy scribes could have lumped the parts of disparate origin into an unordered whole. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Accretion and Redaction. Research on the Mahabharata has put an enormous effort into recognizing and dating layers within the text. Some elements of the present Mahabharata can be traced back to Vedic times. The background to the Mahabharata suggests the origin of the epic occurs after the very early Vedic period and before the first Indian empire was to rise in the 3rd century BC. That this is a date not too far removed from the 8th or 9th century BC is likely. Mahabharata started as an orally transmitted tale of the charioteer bards. It is generally agreed that, unlike the Vedas, which have to be preserved letter perfect, the epic was a popular work whose reciters would inevitably conform to changes in language and style. So the earliest surviving components of this dynamic text are believed to be no older than the earliest external references we have to the epic, which may include an allusion in Panini's 4th century BCE grammar Astadai 4, 256. It is estimated that the Sanskrit text probably reached something of a final form by the early gupta period about the 4th century ce 
Vishnu Sukhthankar, editor of the first great critical edition of the Mahabharata, commented, "...it is useless to think of reconstructing a fluid text in a literally original shape, on the basis of an archetype and a stemma codicum. What then is possible?" Our objective can only be to reconstruct the oldest form of the text which it is possible to reach on the basis of the manuscript material available." That manuscript evidence is somewhat late, given its material composition and the climate of India, but it is very extensive. The Mahabharata itself distinguishes a core portion of 24,000 verses, the Bharata proper, as opposed to additional secondary material, while the Asvalayana Grihasutra makes a similar distinction. At least three redactions of the text are commonly recognized, Jaya victory with 8,800 verses attributed to Vyasa, Bharata with 24,000 verses as recited by Vaisampayana, and finally the Mahabharata as recited by Ugrasrava Saudi with over 100,000 verses. However, some scholars, such as John Brockington, argue that Jaya and Bharata refer to the same text, and ascribe the theory of Jaya with 8,800 verses to a misreading of a verse in Adiparvan The redaction of this large body of text was carried out after formal principles, emphasizing the numbers 18 and 12. The addition of the latest parts may be dated by the absence of the Anusasana Parva and the Virata Parva from the Spitzer manuscript. The oldest surviving Sanskrit text dates to the Kushan period 200 CE. .According to what one character says at MBH, 1.1.50, there were three versions of the epic, beginning with Manu 1.1.27, Astaka 1.3, Subparva 5 or Vasu 1.57, respectively. These versions would correspond to the addition of one and then another frame settings of dialogues. The Vasu version would omit the frame settings and begin with the account of the birth of Vyasa. The Astaka version would add the Sarpasatra and Asvamedha material from Brahmanical literature, introduce the name Mahabharata, and identify Vyasa as the work's author. The redactors of these editions were probably Pankaratran scholars who according to Oberle's 1998 likely retained control over the text until its final redaction. Mention of the Huna in the Bhisma Parva however appears to imply that this Parva may have been edited around the 4th century. The Adi Parva includes the snake sacrifice of Janamejaya, explaining its motivation, detailing why all snakes in existence were intended to be destroyed, and why in spite of this, there are still snakes in existence. This Sarpasatra material was often considered an independent tale added to a version of the Mahabharata by thematic attraction. Minkowski 1991, and considered to have a particularly close connection to Vedic Brahmana literature. The Panyukavimsa Brahmana at enumerates the officiant priests of a Sarpasatra among whom the names Dhartarastra and Janamejaya, two main characters of the Mahabharata's Sarpasatra, as well as Taksaka, the name of a snake in the Mahabharata, occur. The Suparnakyana, a late Vedic period poem considered to be among the earliest traces of epic poetry in India", is an older, shorter precursor to the expanded legend of Garuda that is included in the Astaka Parva, within the Adi Parva of the Mahabharata. Historical references The earliest known references to the Mahabharata and its core Bharata date to the Astadayi Sutra 6 .2 of Panini, Florida, 4th century BCE, and in the Asvalayana Grihya Sutra 3.4.4. This may mean the core 24,000 verses, known as the Bharata, as well as an early version of the extended Mahabharata, were composed by the 4th century BCE. A report by the Greek writer Dio Chrysostom, c. 40 c. 120 CE about Homer's poetry being sung even in India seems to imply that the Iliad had been translated into Sanskrit. However, Indian scholars have, in general, taken this as evidence for the existence of a Mahabharata at this date, whose episodes Dio or his sources identify with the story of the Iliad. Several stories within the Mahabharata took on separate identities of their own in classical Sanskrit literature. For instance, Abhijnana Sakuntala by the renowned Sanskrit poet Kalidasa. C. 400 CE, believed to have lived in the era of the Gupta dynasty, is based on a story that is the precursor to the Mahabharata. Urubanga, a Sanskrit play written by Basa who is believed to have lived before Kalidasa, is based on the slaying of Duryodhana by the splitting of his thighs by Bhima. 
The copper plate inscription of the Maharaja Sharvanatha from Ko Satna district, Madhya Pradesh describes the Mahabharata as a collection of 100,000 verses. Seda Sahasri Samhita. The 18 Parvas or books The division into 18 Parvas is as follows. Historical context The historicity of the Kurukshetra War is unclear. Many historians estimate the date of the Kurukshetra War to Iron Age India of the 10th century BCE. The setting of the epic has a historical precedent in Iron Age Vedic India, where the Kuru Kingdom was the centre of political power during roughly 1200–800 BCE. A dynastic conflict of the period could have been the inspiration for the Jaya, the foundation on which the Mahabharata corpus was built, with a climactic battle eventually coming to be viewed as an epical event. Puranic literature presents genealogical lists associated with the Mahabharata narrative. The evidence of the Puranas is of two kinds. Of the first kind, there is the direct statement that there were 1015 or 1050 years between the birth of Parikshit Arjuna's grandson and the accession of Mahapama Nanda 400-329 BCE, which would yield an estimate of about 1400 BCE for the Bharata battle. However, this would imply improbably long reigns on average for the kings listed in the genealogies. Of the second kind are analyses of parallel genealogies in the Puranas between the times of Adizimakrishna Parikshit's great-grandson and Mahapama Nanda. Parjitar accordingly estimated 26 generations by averaging 10 different dynastic lists and, assuming 18 years for the average duration of a reign, arrived at an estimate of 850 BCE for Adizimakrishna, and thus approximately 950 BCE for the Bharata battle. B. B. Lal used the same approach with a more conservative assumption of the average reign to estimate a date of 836 BCE, and correlated this with archaeological evidence from painted grey ware PGW sites, the association being strong between PGW artifacts and places mentioned in the epic. John Key confirmed this and also gives 950 BCE for the Bharata battle. Attempts to date the events using methods of archaeoastronomy have produced, depending on which passages are chosen and how they are interpreted, estimates ranging from the late 4th to the mid 2nd millennium BCE. The late 4th millennium date has a precedent in the calculation of the Kaliyuga epic, based on planetary conjunctions, by Aryabhata. 6th century. Aryabhata's date of 18 February 3102 BCE for Mahabharata war has become widespread in Indian tradition. Some sources mark this as the disappearance of Krishna from earth. The eyehole inscription of Pulakeshi II, dated to Saka 556 equals 634 CE, claims that 3,735 years have elapsed since the Bharata battle, putting the date of Mahabharata war at 3137 BCE. Another traditional school of astronomers and historians, represented by Virata Garga, Varahamahira author of the Burhatsamita, and Kalhana, author of the Rajatarangini, place the Bharata War 653 years after the Kaliyuga epic, corresponding to 2449 BCE. Topic: <laughs> Synopsis. The core story of the work is that of a dynastic struggle for the throne of Hastinapura, the kingdom ruled by the Kuru clan. The two collateral branches of the family that participate in the struggle are the Kaurava and the Pandava. Although the Kaurava is the senior branch of the family, Duryodhana, the eldest Kaurava, is younger than Yudhishthira, the eldest Pandava. Both Duryodhana and Yudhishthira claim to be first in line to inherit the throne. The struggle culminates in the great battle of Kurukshetra, in which the Pandavas are ultimately victorious. The battle produces complex conflicts of kinship and friendship, instances of family loyalty and duty taking precedence over what is right, as well as the converse. The Mahabharata itself ends with the death of Krishna, and the subsequent end of his dynasty and ascent of the Pandava brothers to heaven. It also marks the beginning of the Hindu age of Kali Yuga, the fourth and final age of humankind, in which great values and noble ideas have crumbled, and people are heading towards the complete dissolution of right action, morality and virtue. The older generations 
King Janamejaya's ancestor Shantanu, the king of Hastinapura, has a short-lived marriage with the goddess Ganga and has a son, Devavrata later to be called Bhishma, a great warrior, who becomes the heir apparent. Many years later, when King Shantanu goes hunting, he sees Satyavati, the daughter of the chief of fishermen, and asks her father for her hand. Her father refuses to consent to the marriage unless Shantanu promises to make any future son of Satyavati the king upon his death. To resolve his father's dilemma, Devavrata agrees to relinquish his right to the throne. As the fisherman is not sure about the prince's children honoring the promise, Devavrata also takes a vow of lifelong celibacy to guarantee his father's promise. Shantanu has two sons by Satyavati, Chitrangada and Vichitravirya. Upon Shantanu's death, Chitrangada becomes king. He lives a very short uneventful life and dies. Vichitravirya, the younger son, rules Hastinapura. Meanwhile, the king of Kasi arranges a swayamvara for his three daughters, neglecting to invite the royal family of Hastinapur. In order to arrange the marriage of young Vichitravirya, Bhishma attends the swayamvara of the three princesses Amba, Ambika and Ambalika, uninvited, and proceeds to abduct them. Ambika and Ambalika consent to be married to Vichitravirya. The oldest princess Amba, however, informs Bhishma that she wishes to marry king of Shalva whom Bhishma defeated at their swayamvara. Bhishma lets her leave to marry king of Shalva, but Shalva refuses to marry her, still smarting at his humiliation at the hands of Bhishma. Amba then returns to marry Bhishma but he refuses due to his vow of celibacy. Amba becomes enraged and becomes Bhishma's bitter enemy, holding him responsible for her plight. Later she is reborn to King Drupada as Shikandi or Shikandini and causes Bhishma's fall, with the help of Arjuna, in the battle of Kurukshetra. The Pandava and Kaurava princes When Vichitravirya dies young without any heirs, Satyavati asks her first son Vyasa to father children with the widows. The eldest, Ambika, shuts her eyes when she sees him, and so her son Dhritarashtra is born blind. Ambalika turns pale and bloodless upon seeing him, and thus her son Pandu is born pale and unhealthy the term Pandu may also mean jaundiced. Due to the physical challenges of the first two children, Satyavati asks Vyasa to try once again. However, Ambika and Ambalika send their maid instead, to Vyasa's room. Vyasa fathers a third son, Vidura, by the maid. He is born healthy and grows up to be one of the wisest characters in the Mahabharata. He serves as Prime Minister Mahamantri or Mahatma to King Pandu and King Dhritarashtra. When the princes grow up, Dhritarashtra is about to be crowned king by Bhishma when Vidura intervenes and uses his knowledge of politics to assert that a blind person cannot be king. This is because a blind man cannot control and protect his subjects. The throne is then given to Pandu because of Dhritarashtra's blindness. Pandu marries twice, to Kunti and Madri. Dhritarashtra marries Gandhari, a princess from Gandhara, who blindfolds herself so that she may feel the pain that her husband feels. Her brother Shakuni is enraged by this and vows to take revenge on the Kuru family. One day, when Pandu is relaxing in the forest, he hears the sound of a wild animal. He shoots an arrow in the direction of the sound. However the arrow hits the sage Kindama, who curses him that if he engages in a sexual act, he will die. Pandu then retires to the forest along with his two wives, and his brother Dhritarashtra rules thereafter, despite his blindness. Pandu's older queen Kunti, however, had been given a boon by sage Durvasa that she could invoke any god using a special mantra. Kunti uses this boon to ask Dharma the god of justice, Vayu the god of the wind, and Indra the lord of the heavens for sons. She gives birth to three sons, Yudhishthira, Bhima, and Arjuna, through these gods. Kunti shares her mantra with the younger queen Madri, who bears the twins Nikula and Sahadeva through the Ashwini twins. However, Pandu and Madri indulge in sex, and Pandu dies. Madri commits sati out of remorse. Kunti raises the five brothers, who are from then on usually referred to as the Pandava brothers. Dhritarashtra has a hundred sons through Gandhari, all born after the birth of Yudhishthira. These are the Kaurava brothers, the eldest being Duryodhana, and the second Dushasana. Other Kaurava brothers were Vikarna and Sukarna. The rivalry and enmity between them and the Pandava brothers, from their youth and into manhood, leads to the Kurukshetra War. <laughs> Lakshagraha the House of Lak. 
After the deaths of their mother Madri and father Pandu, the Pandavas and their mother Kunti returned to the palace of Hastinapur. Yudhishthira is made crown prince by Dhritarashtra, under considerable pressure from his courtiers. Dhritarashtra wanted his own son Duryodhana to become king and lets his ambition get in the way of preserving justice. Shakuni, Duryodhana and Dusasana plot to get rid of the Pandavas. Shakuni calls the architect Purachana to build a palace out of flammable materials like lac and ghee. He then arranges for the Pandavas and the Queen Mother Kunti to stay there, with the intention of setting it alight. However, the Pandavas are warned by their wise uncle, Vidura, who sends them a miner to dig a tunnel. They are able to escape to safety and go into hiding. Back at Hastinapur, the Pandavas and Kunti are presumed dead. Marriage to Draupadi Whilst they were in hiding the Pandavas learn of a Swayamvara which is taking place for the hand of the Pankala princess Draupadi. The Pandavas enter the competition in disguise as Brahmins. The task is to string a mighty steel bow and shoot a target on the ceiling, which is the eye of a moving artificial fish, while looking at its reflection in oil below. Most of the princes fail, many being unable to lift the bow. Arjuna succeeds however. The Pandavas return home and inform their mother that Arjuna has won a competition and to look at what they have brought back. Without looking, Kunti asks them to share whatever it is Arjuna has won among themselves. On explaining the previous life of Draupadi, she ends up being the wife of all five brothers. Indraprastha After the wedding, the Pandava brothers are invited back to Hastinapura. The Kuru family elders and relatives negotiate and broker a split of the kingdom, with the Pandavas obtaining a new territory. Yudhishthira has a new capital built for this territory at Indraprastha. Neither the Pandava nor Kaurava sides are happy with the arrangement however. Shortly after this, Arjuna elopes with and then marries Krishna's sister, Subhadra. Yudhisthra wishes to establish his position as king, he seeks Krishna's advice. Krishna advises him, and after due preparation and the elimination of some opposition, Yudhisthira carries out the Rajasua Yagna ceremony, he is thus recognized as preeminent among kings. The Pandavas have a new palace built for them, by Maya the Daneva. They invite their Kaurava cousins to Indraprastha. Duryodhana walks round the palace, and mistakes a glossy floor for water, and will not step in. After being told of his error, he then sees a pond, and assumes it is not water and falls in. Bhima, Arjun, the twins and the servants laugh at him. In popular adaptations, this insult is wrongly attributed to Draupadi, even though in the Sanskrit epic, it was the Pandavas except Yudhisthira who had insulted Duryodhana. Enraged by the insult, and jealous at seeing the wealth of the Pandavas, Duryodhana decides to host a dice game at Shakuni's suggestion. The dice game Shakuni, Duryodhana's uncle, now arranges a dice game, playing against Yudhishthira with loaded dice. Yudhishthira loses all his wealth, then his kingdom. He then even gambles his brothers, himself, and finally his wife into servitude. The jubilant Kauravas insult the Pandavas in their helpless state and even try to disrobe Draupadi in front of the entire court, but her honor is saved by Krishna who miraculously creates lengths of cloth to replace the ones being removed. Dhritarashtra, Bhishma, and the other elders are aghast at the situation, but Duryodhana is adamant that there is no place for two crown princes in Hastinapura. Against his wishes Dhritarashtra orders for another dice game. The Pandavas are required to go into exile for twelve years, and in the thirteenth year must remain hidden. If discovered by the Kauravas, they will be forced into exile for another twelve years. <inaudible> exile and return The Pandavas spend thirteen years in exile, many adventures occur during this time. They also prepare alliances for a possible future conflict. They spend their final year in disguise in the court of Virata, and are discovered just after the end of the year. At the end of their exile, they try to negotiate a return to Indraprastha with Krishna as their emissary. However, this fails, as Duryodhana objects that they were discovered while in hiding, and that no return of their kingdom was agreed. War becomes inevitable. 
Topic: The battle at Kurukshetra. The two sides summon vast armies to their help and line up at Kurukshetra for a war. The kingdoms of Panchala, Dwaraka, Kasi, Kakaya, Magadha, Matsya, Chedi, Pandyas, Telinga, and the Yadis of Mathura and some other clans like the Parama Kamboyas were allied with the Pandavas. The allies of the Kauravas included the kings of Pragjotisha, Anga, Kakaya, Sindudesa including Sindhus, Saviras and Sivis, Mahishmati, Avanti in Madhyadesa, Madra, Gandhara, Balaka people, Kamboyas and many others. Before war being declared, Balarama had expressed his unhappiness at the developing conflict and leaves to go on pilgrimage, thus he does not take part in the battle itself. Krishna takes part in a non-combatant role, as charioteer for Arjuna. Before the battle, Arjuna noticing that the opposing army includes his own kith and kin, including his great-grandfather Bhishma and his teacher Drona, has grave doubts about the fight and falls into despair. At this time, Krishna reminds him of duty as a kshatriya to fight for his just cause in the famous Bhagavad Gita section of the epic. Though initially sticking to chivalrous notions of warfare, both sides soon adopt dishonorable tactics. At the end of the 18-day battle, only the Pandavas, Satyaki, Kripa, Ashwatthama, Kritavarma, Uyutsu and Krishna survive. The end of the Pandavas After seeing the carnage, Gandhari, who had lost all her sons, curses Krishna to be a witness to a similar annihilation of his family, for though divine and capable of stopping the war, he had not done so. Krishna accepts the curse, which bears fruit 36 years later. The Pandavas, who had ruled their kingdom meanwhile, decide to renounce everything. Clad in skins and rags they retire to the Himalaya and climb towards heaven in their bodily form. A stray dog travels with them. One by one the brothers and Draupadi fall on their way. As each one stumbles, Yudhishthira gives the rest the reason for their fall Draupadi was partial to Arjuna, Nikula and Sahadeva were vain and proud of their looks, and Bhima and Arjuna were proud of their strength and archery skills, respectively. Only the virtuous Yudhishthira, who had tried everything to prevent the carnage, and the dog remain. The dog reveals himself to be the god Yama also known as Yama Dharmaraja, and then takes him to the underworld where he sees his siblings and wife. After explaining the nature of the test, Yama takes Yudhishthira back to heaven and explains that it was necessary to expose him to the underworld because Rajante Narakam Dhruvam any ruler has to visit the underworld at least once. Yama then assures him that his siblings and wife would join him in heaven after they had been exposed to the underworld for measures of time according to their vices. Arjuna's grandson Parikshit rules after them and dies bitten by a snake. His furious son, Janamejaya, decides to perform a snake sacrifice Sarpasatra in order to destroy the snakes. It is at this sacrifice that the tale of his ancestors is narrated to him. The reunion The Mahabharata mentions that Karna, the Pandavas, Draupadi and Dhritarashtra's sons eventually ascended to Svarga and attained the state of the gods and banded together serene and free from anger topic themes topic just war the mahabharata offers one of the first instances of theorizing about dharmayuta just war illustrating many of the standards that would be debated later across the world. In the story, one of five brothers asks if the suffering caused by war can ever be justified. A long discussion ensues between the siblings, establishing criteria like proportionality chariots cannot attack cavalry, only other chariots, no attacking people in distress, just means no poisoned or barbed arrows, just cause no attacking out of rage, and fair treatment of captives and the wounded. Topic. Versions, translations, and derivative works Topic. Critical edition 
Between 1919 and 1966, scholars at the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Pune, compared the various manuscripts of the epic from India and abroad and produced the critical edition of the Mahabharata, on 13,000 pages in 19 volumes, followed by the Harivamsha in another two volumes and six index volumes. This is the text that is usually used in current Mahabharata studies for reference. This work is sometimes called the Pune or Pune edition of the Mahabharata. Regional versions Many regional versions of the work developed over time, mostly differing only in minor details, or with verses or subsidiary stories being added. These include the Tamil street theatre, Tarakuttu and Kataikuttu, the plays of which use themes from the Tamil language versions of Mahabharata, focusing on Draupadi. Outside the Indian subcontinent, in Indonesia, a version was developed in ancient Java as Kakawan Bharatayuda in the 11th century under the patronage of King Dharmawangsa and later it spread to the neighbouring island of Bali, which remains a Hindu-majority island today. It has become the fertile source for Javanese literature, dance drama Wayang Wang, and Wayang shadow puppet performances. This Javanese version of the Mahabharata differs slightly from the original Indian version. For example, Draupadi is only wed to Yudhishthira, not to all the Pandava brothers, this might demonstrate ancient Javanese opposition to polyandry. The author later added some female characters to be wed to the Pandavas, for example, Arjuna is described as having many wives and consorts next to Subhadra. Another difference is that Shikandini does not change her sex and remains a woman, to be wed to Arjuna, and takes the role of a warrior princess during the war. Another twist is that Gandhari is described as antagonistic character who hates the Pandavas, her hate is out of jealousy because during Gandhari's Swayamvara, she was in love with Pandu but was later wed to his blind elder brother instead, whom she did not love, so she blindfolded herself as protest. Another notable difference is the inclusion of the Punakawans, the clown servants of the main characters in the storyline. These characters include Samar, Petruk, Garing and Bagong, who are much loved by Indonesian audiences. There are also some spin-off episodes developed in ancient Java, such as Arjunawiwaha composed in 11th century. A Kawi version of the Mahabharata, of which eight of the 18 Parvas survive, is found on the Indonesian island of Bali. It has been translated into English by Dr. I. Gusti Putu Falganadi. Translations A Persian translation of Mahabharata, titled Razmame, was produced at Akbar's orders, by Faizi and backquote Abd al-Qadir Badauni in the 18th century. The first complete English translation was the Victorian prose version by Kasari Mohan Gangalai, published between 1883 and 1896 and by M. N. Dutt Banarsidas Publishers. Most critics consider the translation by Gangalai to be faithful to the original text. The complete text of Gangalai's translation is in the public domain and is available online. Another English prose translation of the full epic, based on the critical edition, is in progress, published by University of Chicago Press. It was initiated by Indologist J. A. B. Van Bittenen books 1 to 5, and, following a 20-year hiatus caused by the death of Van Bittenen, is being continued by D. Gittimer of DePaul University book 6, J. L. Fitzgerald of Brown University books 11 to 13, and Wendy Doniger of the University of Chicago books 14 to 18. An early poetry translation by Romesh Chunder Dutt and published in 1898 condenses the main themes of the Mahabharata into English verse. A later poetic transcreation, author's own description of the full epic into English, done by the poet P. Lal, is complete, and in 2005 began being published by Writer's Workshop, Calcutta. The P. Lal translation is a non-rhyming verse-by-verse rendering, and is the only edition in any language to include all slokas in all recensions of the work, not just those in the critical edition. The completion of the publishing project is scheduled for 2010. Sixteen of the eighteen volumes are now available. A project to translate the full epic into English prose, translated by various hands, began to appear in 2005 from the Clay Sanskrit Library, published by New York University Press. The translation is based not on the critical edition but on the version known to the commentator Nilakantha. Currently available are 15 volumes of the projected 32-volume edition. 
Indian economist Bibek de Broglie has also begun an unabridged English translation in ten volumes. Volume 1, Adi Parva was published in March 2010. Many condensed versions, abridgments and novelistic prose retellings of the complete epic have been published in English, including works by Ramesh Menon, William Buck, R. K. Narayan, C. Rajagopalachari, K. M. Munshi, Krishna Dharma, Ramesh C. Dutt, Bharadvaja Sarma, John D. Smith and Sharon Moss. Derivative literature Basa, the 2nd or 3rd century CE Sanskrit playwright, wrote two plays on episodes in the Maribharata, Urubanga broken thigh, about the fight between Duryodhana and Bhima, while Madhyamavyayoga the middle one set around Bhima and his son, Gadakacha. The first important play of 20th century was Andha Yug the Blind Epic, by Dharamvir Bharati, which came in 1955, found in Mahabharat, both an ideal source and expression of modern predicaments and discontent. Starting with Ibrahim Alkazi it was staged by numerous directors. V. S. Khandakar's Marathi novel, Yayati and Gurish Karnad's debut play Yayati are based on the story of King Yayati found in the Mahabharat. Bengali writer and playwright, Buddhadeva Bose wrote three plays set in Mahabharat, Anamni and Gana, Pratham Partha and Kalsanya. Pratibha Ray wrote an award-winning novel entitled Yajnasini from Draupadi's perspective in 1984. Later, Chitra Banerjee Devakaruni wrote a similar novel entitled The Palace of Illusions, a novel in 2008. Gujarati poet Chinu Modi has written long narrative poetry Bahak based on character Bahuka. Krishna Udayasankar, a Singapore-based Indian author has written several novels which are modern-day retellings of the epic, most notably the Aryavarta Chronicle series. Suman Pokhrel wrote a solo play based on Ray's novel by personalizing and taking Draupadi alone in the scene. Amar Chitra Katha published a 1,260-page comic book version of the Mahabharata. In film and television In Indian cinema, several film versions of the epic have been made, dating back to 1920. In Telugu film Dana Veera Sora Karna directed by and starring N. T. Rama Rao depicts Karna as the lead character. The Mahabharata was also reinterpreted by Shyam Benegal in Kalig. Prakash Jha directed 2010 film Rajniti was partially inspired by the Mahabharata. A 2013 animated adaptation holds the record for India's most expensive animated film. In the late 1980s, the Mahabharat TV series, directed by Ravi Chopra, was televised on India's national television, Doordarshan. The same year as Mahabharat was being shown on Doordarshan, that same company's other television show, Bharat Ek Khoj, also directed by Shyam Benegal, showed a two episode abbreviation of the Mahabharata, drawing from various interpretations of the work, be they sung, danced, or staged. In the Western world, a well known presentation of the epic is Peter Brook's nine hour play, which premiered in Avignon in 1985, and its five hour movie version, The Mahabharata. 1989. In the late 2013 Mahabharat was televised on Star Plus. It was produced by Swastik Productions Private. Uncompleted projects on the Mahabharata include a ones by Rajkumar Santoshi, and a theatrical adaptation planned by Satyajit Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Jain version Jain versions of Mahabharata can be found in the various Jain texts like Harivamsa Purana, the story of Harivamsa, Purusa Karitra, Hagiography of 63 illustrious persons, Pandavakaritra, Lives of Pandavas, and Pandavapurana, Stories of Pandavas. From the earlier canonical literature, Antakardasa (8th canon) and Vrajnidasa (Upangagama or secondary canon) contain the stories of Naminatha (22nd Tirthankara), Krishna, and Balarama. Professor Padman of Jaini notes that, unlike in the Hindu Puranas, the names Baladeva and Vasudeva are not restricted to Balarama and Krishna in Jain Puranas. Instead they serve as names of two distinct class of mighty brothers, who appear nine times in each half of time cycles of the Jain cosmology and rule the half the earth as half Chakravartans. 
Jaini traces the origin of this list of brothers to the Janasharitra by Bhadrabahu Swami 4th, 3rd century BCE. .According to Jain cosmology Balarama, Krishna and Jarasandha are the ninth and the last set of Baladeva, Vasudeva, and Partavasudeva. The main battle is not the Mahabharata, but the fight between Krishna and Jarasandha who is killed by Krishna. Ultimately, the Pandavas and Balarama take renunciation as Jain monks and are reborn in heavens, while on the other hand Krishna and Jarasandha are reborn in hell. In keeping with the law of karma, Krishna is reborn in hell for his exploits sexual and violent while Jarasandha for his evil ways. Professor. Jaini admits a possibility that perhaps because of his popularity, the Jain authors were keen to rehabilitate Krishna. The Jain texts predict that after his karmic term in hell is over sometime during the next half-time cycle, Krishna will be reborn as a Jain Tirthankara and attain liberation. Krishna and Balrama are shown as contemporaries and cousins of 22nd Tirthankara, Naminatha. According to this story, Krishna arranged young Naminath's marriage with Rajamati, the daughter of Ugrasena, but Naminatha, empathizing with the animals which were to be slaughtered for the marriage feast, left the procession suddenly and renounced the world. Kuru family tree This shows the line of royal and family succession, not necessarily the parentage. See the notes below for detail. Key to symbols Male, blue border Female, red border Pandavas, green box Kauravas, yellow box notes a. Shantanu was a king of the Kuru dynasty or kingdom, and was some generations removed from any ancestor called Kuru. His marriage to Ganga preceded his marriage to Satyavati. b. Pandu and Dhritarashtra were fathered by Vyasa in the Niyoga tradition after Vichitravirya's death. Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidura were the sons of Vyasa with Ambika, Ambalika and a maid servant respectively. c. Karna was born to Kundi through her invocation of Surya, before her marriage to Pandu. D. Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Nikula and Sahadeva were acknowledged sons of Pandu but were begotten by the invocation by Kunti and Madri of various deities. They all married Draupadi not shown in tree. E. Duryodhana and his siblings were born at the same time, and they were of the same generation as their Pandava cousins. F. Although the succession after the Pandavas was through the descendants of Arjuna and Subhadra, it was Yudhishthira and Draupadi who occupied the throne of Hastinapura after the great battle. The birth order of siblings is correctly shown in the family tree from left to right, except for Vyasa and Bhishma whose birth order is not described, and Vichitravirya and Chitrangada who were born after them. The fact that Ambika and Ambalika are sisters is not shown in the family tree. The birth of Duryodhana took place after the birth of Karna, Yudhishthira and Bhima, but before the birth of the remaining Pandava brothers. Some siblings of the characters shown here have been left out for clarity, these include Chitrangada, the eldest brother of Vichitravirya. Vidura, half-brother to Dhritarashtra and Pandu. <laughs> Cultural influence In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains to Arjuna his duties as a warrior and prince and elaborates on different yogic and Vedantic philosophies, with examples and analogies. This has led to the Gita often being described as a concise guide to Hindu philosophy and a practical, self-contained guide to life. In more modern times, Swami Vivekananda, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Mahatma Gandhi, and many others used the text to help inspire the Indian independence movement. Various modern day television shows and novels have taken inspiration from the Mahabharata. Editions <laughs> 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 The Mahabharata, complete and unabridged set of ten volumes by Bybeck de Broy, Penguin Books India. The Mahabharata of Vyasa 18 volumes, transcreated from Sanskrit by P. Lal, Writer's Workshop. See also Kali Yuga Characters in the Mahabharata <laughs>